Oh yeah, sexy biscuits. Nice. Long black clothes, 1975 and welcome to another Fat Friday video, a series of videos where I take a look at some more interesting things you can find to eat in the high street. Apologies, I sound a bit Barry White-ish or maybe that's your thing, maybe that floats your boat, but I'm just coming off the tail end of a sickness, which is why uh, I did not uh, try this product because you saw the product that I want to eat in today's video, which is Heinz Sandwich Spread. Thumbnail! Um, in my Friday video before last uh, and yeah I generally have not tried this mouth's gone which is interesting because this isn't even frozen and while I technically have had this before it's been 35 plus years since I have had this as I said in last week's video I didn't know this was still a thing anyway jumping ahead of myself so uh, after I made the video last week on the Saturday I got sick. Now, it's not like I lost my sense of taste or anything. I mean, I didn't even lose my sense of taste uh, in the two times I had COVID. But let's be honest, COVID was nothing more than an exaggerated cold with an over 90% survival rate that was just an exercise from the government to see how easy it was to control the population. Spoilers! Turned out it was pretty fucking easy, uh, wasn't it? Anyway, uh, no, but when I get a cold or I'm sick, I don't enjoy eating. Eating becomes a chore, becomes something I literally have to do just to get fuel in my body to kind of outlast the cold. So I lived on Heinz chicken soup, which to be fair, when you're not ill, is pretty banging soup. Um, so uh, I did not want to try this. Uh, and I didn't really feel like making a video and my throat was absolutely... Um, banged up. I mean, if you watch any of my Prince of Persia videos, then you'll know uh, <laughs> I was um, I was gargling with glass. But the reason I wanted to do this in a video, because you could say, well, that's not really a meal, that's not anything, um, is because this was very hard to find anything about uh, online, like really, really difficult. Only tidbits of information here and there. Uh, and most of that was in forums, and quite a lot of it contradicts uh, each other. And I don't think I found um, a single, maybe one, which I didn't watch because um, the quality was appalling. I know, that's me saying that, right? <laughs> um, but um, taste tests of this on YouTube. So anyway, before we get into it, do I have anything new in Crisp Corner? Why, yes, I do. Again, something that I've had for a week, uh, which I have not yet tried because, again, I don't like eating shit when I am ill. And that would be Doritos New Extra Flaming Hot. Uh, now, if you saw a video a few weeks ago, there is another, uh, it's in the Max family, it might even be my last video. They um, released uh, three Flaming Hot flavors, uh, and it's supposedly higher than the regular, well I've had that bag, uh, it is higher than the regular Flaming Hot that you would get in Crisp, but let's be honest, Flaming Hot and Crisp is more of a dessert and tastes really, really sweet. Or is that just me? It is hot in here. It's about, no, I'll save that for the weather, but why is the heating on? Why is the heating on? Anyway, so they weren't particularly hot, but they were slightly hotter than regular flaming hot flavors. But the thing is, I love me some Doritos. It's a texture thing, isn't it? It's a dipping thing. So while technically I have had this flavor, um, the shape and texture of the crisp does make a difference in how the flavor is delivered. So I am quite looking forward. To trying these. I'm absolutely ravenous now. I'm still a little bit surprised that I get Pavlov's dogs uh, over a product that's not even frozen. That means technically, in the way that I've mentally conditioned myself, there is hope for me yet. Anyway, do I have anything new in Eddie's bar? Welcome to Eddie's Bar. I have one new addition to Eddie's Bar and it's something that I have had before but not this brand uh, and um, it's quite interesting because this one is uh, supposedly a lot stronger than the last one I had which was honey. Check out this bad boy. Hilltop, which funnily enough is the name of my house, hot honey. Now I have had hot honey before and it wasn't super 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 hot and I kind of use it more of a basing for sauces and marinades on chicken in my air fryer. But this one 
is three chili ratings. So I'm really quite looking forward to this. Why does every fucktard decide to phone me when I'm doing these videos? Uh, plus we also have the noises, most irritating ringtone uh, of a landline, but then I don't ever fucking answer it. So that's not really an issue for me. Anyhow, yeah, so Hilltop Hot Honey, really looking forward to this. We'll be trying it uh, on toast. Uh, I don't drink hot drinks uh, anymore. Uh, and I'll probably be obviously using it on chicken and shit like that. But uh, a couple of people, including my buddy Sean, uh, said that this is absolutely banging on pizza. So who knows? We'll find out. I'll keep you up to date on that. This was £2.75 though from uh, B&M, which is really rather quite expensive. Anyway, let's have a look at the weather. So it's about 14 degrees out there. You may not look it, but it's warm. It's spring, it's warm, I'm immediately not happy, I'm immediately looking, uh, not looking forward to the oncoming uh, summer weather. But why is the heating on? I'm sweating bullets in here. But anyway, interesting things that have happened this week. Obviously, anyone who knows me knows my thoughts on it, and I'm not going to talk about it because I'd be here for fucking hours, but the Scottish hate bill got passed, otherwise known as the end of freedom of speech and democracy in Scotland. Can't do anything about it. It's in place. Hopefully, if you vote this fucker out, uh, it can be repealed. But yeah, it's in. But that's not what I want to talk about. Uh, I want to talk about Oxford Council, who are going to introduce a new, it's essentially a tax, but it's going to make people who drive SUVs, it's going to make their parking uh, like three times the price of every other vehicle. Uh, it's been introduced in Paris years ago. I mean, essentially, it's just to make money, but it was a proposal by the Green Party. I don't understand how a party that only has one seat in Parliament can wield such power and act like they're a party in waiting for government. If these fuckers ever got in power, thank fuck they won't. They would drag us all back to the dark ages. They have the eco economic literacy of my bull sack. Anyway, so they suggested that SUVs, um, because of their size and their weight and the damage they do to the roads and the tar particulates that come off when they wear their tires and go into the atmosphere, which is uh, obviously it's actually worse than what comes out of the exhaust of a car, um, because that's such a pollutant, they need to be deterred from going in the city centers. So they want them to charge, be charged three times as much to park. It's a tax. It's to raise money, as most fucking green policies are. And make no mistake about it, if this gets rolled out in one city centre, then it will be rolled out in all city centres uh, across the country because most fucking, um, you know, councils and local governments are bankrupt because of the pursuit of their fucking insane um, woke policies. Just look at Birmingham, which obviously means that everyone gets their services cut and the council tax goes up by fucking 25%. But the point is, right, so they wanted to tell these people going and they want to charge three times as much for them to park because of their weight. Well, here's the thing with that. As you know, I don't believe in electric, or I don't believe in electric vehicles because they are not green. Bunking fact. Um, this is a stupid fucking folly that should not be pursued like this. But obviously the powers that be, pff, what the fuck do they know? They're insulated from their decisions by their massive amount of wealth. But so if you're going to tax SUVs for damaging the roads and the tar particulates that are going to go into the air, then you have to fucking start taxing, charging to park um, S, uh, electric vehicles because they are heavier than SUVs and they have the exact same if not worse problem with their tyres. Now like I said let's pretend that they are green but they aren't green. So by doing this to SUVs then you're going to have to introduce it to these cars because this is the rule they're heavy they damage the roads their tyres etc etc etc. You then contradict your own green air zone because you'll be making people People will be able to drive into your city centre in a petrol car and in some cases a diesel car and pay nothing. But then you'll have electric vehicles there under your uh, perception, not mine, um, uh, at zero emission. You're going to be fucking punishing them. So it, it's a contradiction in fucking terms. Well, then obviously we'll ignore the fact that it's just for money. Then by that, uh, you know... Um, strategy then surely you're going to have to start taxing buses as well because they commit the most damage to roads and their tar particulates will be even worse because they're far far heavier because i mean just saying if you're going to go on weight then you have to do that but then that will become a tax on the poor and people who can't afford to own cars and then surely the actual sorry the true worst offenders will be fucking lorries 
You know, the people who deliver all our fucking foods and goods to city centres, supermarkets, every store on the fucking planet. You're going to have to start taxing them as well. So that becomes a tax on the poor as well because it puts up the cost of living and food. This is just a fucking stupid policy. It's another example of the pursuit of green ideology that fucking hammers everyone else. And it's... The hypocrisy is through the roof and it ultimately achieves nothing but put money in the pockets of all these fucking corrupt and bankrupt fucking councils. Fucking, when are people going to wake the fuck up and see through this bullshit? Anyway, <laughs> back to this bad boy. Fuck me, I really am sweating like a prostitute on holy ground. So, why do I want to try this bad boy? As I mentioned in my previous Fat Friday video, this was a staple of me and my brothers and a lot of people from my generation in sandwiches, hence the fact sandwich spread, when we were kids. I remember in the 80s, this would be in our packed lunches uh, at primary school. Um, we would have it at home sandwiches and my mum couldn't be bothered. Excuse me, preemptive Windy Pops couldn't be bothered to cook. I remember we would uh, have it, you know, as a light lunch when we were down the caravan in Blue Anchor Bay on our holidays. I can vividly remember being sat at the, the raise up table that you could drop down and make into a double bed in the caravan with my brothers and there'd be a tin of Heinz potato salad and a few sort of, um, you know, veggies cut up like lettuce. Uh, and tomato and cucumber and stuff like that. And there would be this, when we would have it in sandwiches, my parents would just have a salad sandwich, but we had this, and a lot of people, um, according to the forums that I look in, look upon this very, very, very fondly. Like I said, loved it as a kid. And then I don't know what happened, because obviously in 1990, I was, what, 14 and 15, because obviously you're two ages in each uh, calendar year. So I don't know if I decided that my palate was above this or deserving of something a little more highbrow, um, I just stopped eating it. And I've literally completely and utterly forgotten about it ever since. Uh, it's funny because now that I know it's a thing, I see it in supermarkets because I know to look for it. So I don't think it was a thing that it went away and then obviously everything, you know, nostalgia and retro shit like that, driving up sales, it came back and so now it's a thing again. I think it just, I forgot about it. Uh, and never thought um, to look for it. So I don't know why I noticed it when I saw it a couple of weeks ago, other than I guess I had a hit in nostalgia and just went, oh my God, I remember that. I have to try it. It's pound seventy-five a jar and it weighs 300 grams. And let's see what the ingredients are. The ingredients are, first ingredient, we'll get into this, spirit vinegar. Then it's cabbage, then it's rapeseed oil, carrots, gherkins. Ooh, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Anyone who knows me knows I fucking hate gherkins. Um, firming agent, calcium, uh, calcium chloride, a modified corn flour, onion salt, egg yolks, red peppers, mustard, and stabilizers. Doesn't sound too bad, does it? I'm not gonna say it sounds fucking gourmet or anything like that, but yeah. So like I said, this was a sandwich spread and we would have this with Jess some you know just in the just buttered bread that nothing added to it because from the limited information i find out about this online so if anyone knows anything about this by all means correct me down below because i would really like to know because i couldn't find anything apart from a few posts here and there this is considered um a relish or a condiment um and not really a sandwich spread i'm assuming well, I, I kind of get that. It, you, it's a base for your sandwich, but like I said, relish or condiment or not, myself, my family, and what I read about everyone online, they all use this literally by itself as a sandwich spread, as their sandwich, not a base for anything else, but as their sandwich. I mean, am I gonna try it as a base for some other things? Possibly, obviously not dying here. Obviously not in this video. Now, here's the thing, no idea when this kicked in. As far as I can tell from one post, it kicked in in 1972. But also, in another post, I heard people who were born in the 60s, uh, you know, talking about this and having it when they were kids. So did it kick in the 60s? Did it kick in in the 70s? Generally, don't know. I didn't have it till the very early to mid, uh, late 80s. But through the 80s, from the start to the end of the 80s, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, I'm really not sure, couldn't find anything. Uh, maybe it's on the Heinz website, maybe I should get a white right stick, don't know. The other thing I found out that was quite interesting about it is, supposedly, this killed eight people in one family once. So maybe it got taken off the shelves for that for a bit. Again, don't know, don't know if that's an old wives tale, but I came across that in a couple of forums, that apparently an entire family ate a jar of this and sandwiches that had gone bad. 
uh, and it gave them all food poisoning and it killed them all. Again, don't know. So like I said, if you know anything about this, by all means let me know. Because like I said, staple of my childhood, thought it went away, did not. Turns out it's been around ever since. Turned out a lot of other people loved it as much as me as uh, kids. Uh, and also, um, there's very little information about it out there. Other than this as well, apparently the biggest two countries, or the, it's, it's mainly only sold in two countries, I should say. Uh, that's here, us, and Denmark. Apparently the only two people who like it are us and the Danes, which is why if you do look on YouTube and you do find commercials or adverts for it, um, they're Danish. But apparently there's a small uh, fan base for it in Canada, so I'm wondering if that's like an expat thing or anything, but it's officially sold here and it's officially sold uh, in Denmark. So anyway, basically, I'm going to cut myself a big ass piece of bread. I'm going to have an open sandwich for this because uh, I thought it would be more interesting for the purpose of this video. Uh, open sandwich for this, open face sandwich if you watch the Adventures of Pete and Pete. Um, and yeah, cut myself a big ass piece of bread. I'm gonna butter it um, because you can't put butter on bread when you have a sandwich. It's the law. And then I'm gonna smile, smile, pile on, slather on if you're a massive amount of this. And I'm generally gonna try this for the first time in at least 30 plus uh, years. So anyway, let's get into this bad boy. So bread. Uh, I've got flora, natural ingredients, buttery. I do actually have butter. I bought some butter for this, but like a complete rem tart. I forgot to leave it out, because you've got to leave butter out for 30 minutes at room temperature, um, so you can spread it. So we're going to have to go with this, because I'm not going to be able to spread it. I know people say, well, what do you just buy spreadable lure pack? Spreadable lure pack's exactly the same as regular fucking lure pack. It doesn't spread. You even have to leave the spreadable out so it can spread. Plate, um, butter and knife, and sandwich spread. Uh, You've got to hope, right? I mean, as kids, we had this um, just in regular bread, you know, kind of like that, extremely soft. But as an adult, I figured the best way to try this would be on a killer bait um, loaf of bread. I say that, it's from a supermarket. If you're going to buy freshly baked bread, then you've got to buy it um, from... Uh, Gonna cut it this way. You've got to buy it from an actual baker. Don't throw the crust away. I use that to make a little mini pizza and shit like that. Uh, the light's a bit shit in here. Can I do anything about that? Because of course I can. Because energy saving light bulbs. Another fucking piece of green bollocks. That look about right. So like I said, um, if it's nice, I mean I liked it once. I can't see that I've grown out of it, um, then obviously have it in a regular traditional soft sandwich, but, oh that smells banging. Oh, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to have it. What a mess you make mine, as an open sandwich, or open face sandwich. Is that what they're called? I think that's what they're called. Apologies if you can hear my dog barking. Uh, she's in the conservatory at the moment, because she took a massive shit on the rug. Right. I don't know who's been in this, and Hannibal lectured it, but... See what I mean? Like, if this was my butter, again, it's my fault for uh, not leaving it at room temperature, um, I'd just absolutely rip and destroy the bread. So, like, cover it. I hate it when people butter shit, and they don't get it to the edges of the actual bread. So you can go over here. What is this? going to be like. Wait for the pop. Okay. That. That's got a really weird texture. It smells so unbelievably vinegary. I can't get over that. And it's, that's, that's an instant nostalgia bomb coming right back there. Can you see? Can you see the texture of that? It is basically a relish. You can see carrot, I can see peppers, I can see gherkins. Um, maybe this means that I never always used to hate gherkins. Oh, look at that. That's... That's odd. It's very easy to spread. It's definitely a relish. It's like a mush. Can you see that? That is, 
I can remember it looking like that as a kid, but <laughs> it is weird. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. That is not the most appetizing looking thing. Right, you got to refrigerate it. Apparently, according to this, keeps for three weeks, but you got to refrigerate it once you open it. So, anyhow, let's try this bad boy. Right, before we get into this, look, look at that. I'm generally quite a little bit anxious about this. Before we get into it, fire extinguisher of choice. Back on the Tesco's Diet Lemonade, because this is probably tied now with uh, Asda Diet Lemonade, but, Let's get into this. So, Heinz sandwich spread, um, or radish, if you will. I am dying my own salivation. Two tears in a bucket, fuck it. Oh my word. Didn't prepare any napkins. As soon as I bit into that, I could immediately remember my childhood. Strong words, um, but yeah, sat at the um, table in our caravan, eating this and sandwiches. That this is really rather quite nice. Is it for everyone? Probably not. Would kids today like it? Probably not. Um, is its main market base? Probably it's the people who grew up with it. Probably. Um, the first thing is you get, an, I mean, you saw it, it was the first ingredient. You get an absolute massive kick in the teeth of tart uh, vinegar. Um, and it's not unpleasant, but it's very, very strong. If you don't like vinegar, I mean, if you don't even like mild salad cream, you're not gonna like this. I mean, obviously you can taste salad cream in it, but yeah, it's really, really strong. It makes the bits there, in there, go a little bit um, squiffy. Um, the other thing is, it's weird because it, I said it's quite gunky in, you know, when you spread it and oozing stuff like that. But when you eat it, um, there's a crunch to the vegetables in it. You're not gonna hear that, but there is an actual crunch to the vegetables in it. And also, I recommend that you eat it like this. My mouth's gone now, my mouth's absolutely gone. Why did I stop eating this? It's very rare that I have something that I haven't had in years, and in this case, decades. It's like there's a second hit as well, um, of vinegar. Like, I got a second hit of vinegar then, that I'll have immediately, and it's like, in my brain, uh, you know, in your like taste perception and stuff like that, it's like I never stop having it. It just picked up where it left off. Um, and you just remember it being absolutely awesome. I mean, it's gonna be loaded in salt and probably super processed. So it's making me hungrier. Um, so, you know, it's probably not the healthy choice. It's gluten free though, but it tastes very fantastic. It, it, honestly, I can taste my childhood in this and as an adult, I'm not, it's not just rose-tinted member berry nostalgia goggles. This genuinely, to me, tastes fantastic. Why did I ever stop eating this? Am I going to carry on eating this? Hell yes. Um, am I going to experiment and use it as a base for sandwiches? Hell yes also. But am I just going to have it in sandwiches? And particularly like this. Definitely. If you have not had this, but this was a staple of your childhood, you need to get on this because... Very few things are not just only a, a, a massive, you know, rush of nostalgia, but as good as you, or at least in my case, I remember and still taste utterly fantastic. It's a bit messy to eat. Excuse me, pig. Power cleanse. Anyway, as always, I'd love to know what you think, but especially if you've revisited it in recent years and like myself, haven't had it for an extended break, but Heinz sandwich spread, absolutely banging. 
I almost feel a little bit bad for neglecting it all these years. Anyways, always a love to know what you think. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you later.